so it seems like there's just a wide open field for research in microchimerism. In particular, I'm hearing large gaps in what we know about who has which cells circulating, where they are, how long they last, and whether they're beneficial or not. Is that right, that I, we're just really getting started on this? I think that's right, and can I put a plug in for an area that I think is really key. Postpartum, there is a wide vulnerability to a whole host of autoimmune diseases. Hmm. Um, there's an increased incidence of new onset rheumatoid arthritis. Um, there's, uh, uh, if a woman has rheumatoid arthritis or she has lupus or she has multiple sclerosis, they all flare postpartum. Hmm. It's a very interesting time. And to my knowledge, there's not a single study of the immunology of postpartum hmm. or knowing what happens with these cells. And one of the observations we do have that is published is um, we have at least suggestive evidence that um, once a woman becomes pregnant and has her own child, those cells may be displacing the cells that that woman had from her own mother. So in other words, the grandchild is booting out the grandmother. Mm. Oh, how interesting. And so why not look in this postpartum window, too? And, and mm -hmm. there's just nothing there. It's so fascinating. Mm. I mean, I would love to just see a gigantic study that looks systematically at what percentage of people have how many cells of what kind from mother, from fetus, and like over time. Yes. And that should be perfectly doable. And we have new sequencing te techniques that are making this possible, yes. right? Yes, it's eminently doable. So what's the grand project you would do if you had unlimited money and time? That would start it. I really would want to know dynamically over time what happens. Um, I have a strong preference for trying to do work in humans, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the mouse is a great model for reproduction. It's quite different. Mm -hmm. um, I would look at that postpartum window. I would put someone on the project of looking, um, there isn't a single review out there that tells us what is the effect of having had a birth versus having had um, a pregnancy that didn't result in a birth across a autoimmune diseases and then across all cancers. We know some things, like we know the reduction in risk of breast cancer with having had a birth. It's also true for ovarian cancer. But in terms of systematically looking at this and then looking at other like neurological diseases, we don't have the big picture view mm -hmm. in humans. And I think mm -hmm. that would be really, that would be really, really helpful. Doing the work in the brain would be part of that big project. Um, as I said, it's not easy work to do because people don't want to give a brain biopsy. No, we wouldn't ask but them for it. Of, there are brain <laughs> banks that are ready to go for this kind of thing. Then. But in general, you need the, the source of the microchimerism you're looking for. So you can't just work from an autopsy sample other than looking for male DNA in a female. So if you want to look for maternal so you, you need, microchimerism. You need DNA from the parents as well yeah. uh, and the children as yeah, well. Yeah, so that's possible. a little, that's harder to do. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's just. I think it's doable, it's it just challenging. It is doable, you just have to go find the relatives yes. um, and yeah. get them to give samples and so many good questions yeah. to be answered here. And I've got to add something else since you gave me a big plan. Um, I would like to know why rheumatoid arthritis goes into remission when women get pregnant and so does multiple sclerosis. At least it mm -hmm. improves, I should use the word ameliorates for mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis. There are also changes in obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, during pregnancy? During pregnancy. But the research, research goes both ways, but I've seen patients who get dramatically better and somewhat worse um, in the midst of pregnancy. And as you say, after delivery, one has to watch very carefully to see mm -hmm. what happens. And it would be very yeah. interesting to look at postpartum depression. So what do you make of postpartum depression? Might that be relevant to any of this, do you think? I think it should be looked at. I mean, um, I have a friend who had twins, and she tells me that um, She's, she actually, after the pregnancy and after the birth, she felt like she was wired just for their cry, that it was completely different, yes. their cry versus the cry of any other baby. Huh. And it would make sense that things would happen biologically um, right. Right. to secure that connection. And, and maybe postpartum depression has, maybe this is some one piece of some that. subset of it. Right. Yeah.